Field Lab speaker, Katie Jurgen. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We're good? Do I sound okay? Okay. All right. Hello, hello, hello. So yes, I am a high school teacher and uh, I am going to present to you a lesson that I taught my 10th graders. Uh, so if any of you have never coded Java before, after these 15 minutes, you are going to make a very, be able to make a very impressive program where you can make a little Photoshop, Instagram filter for your, for your photos. So this was the challenge I gave to my students uh, to take uh, their photo ID. This is my lovely work photo ID. <laughs> and to do all of these effects. Uh, copy it, turn it grayscale, make a photo negative, brighten it, these other effects, and also to invent their own effect. Uh, they were able to do it, this is the result. This is a real student's work. This is, uh, I think, Jacob's work. Uh, so yes, they took my photo and were, was able to make all of these effects for it. And then when it came to inventing their own effect, they certainly did not disappoint. Here are some samples. They did it in the style of the artist George Surratt. They contrasted it, then they just blew up my face <laughs> and then tiled it. Someone else swirled it, blurred it, did this sort of half skeleton thing. I, at the end, that just got creative. I actually think that was a mistake, but I gave him full credit. <laughs> <laughs> And so on. They got really creative. I also had, I had shown them uh, Andy Warhol paintings before this project, and so that was an inspiration for that last one. So here's a sample of code. This is the code that makes the one that turns it black and white. And by the end of this, all of this will make sense. So let's get started. First, let's uh, talk about color. What is color? So if you've ever been to, uh, say, a Broadway show or some show like this, you see a spotlight on someone. If you look really close, you might notice, even though it's a white light, around the edges, it's gonna be like kind of blue and kind of red and kind of green. That's because there isn't one light on that person. There are three lights, a red light, a green light, and a blue light. And when you put those three lights together, it makes white. So it's a little counterintuitive, but color is additive. So when you do red, green, and blue all together, they make white. If you take one of those out of the equation, you get one of these secondary colors. Without any blue, you get your yellow. Without any green, you get your magenta. Without any red, you get your cyan. So with just red, green, and blue, you can really make any color combination possible. And this is what our computers do. This is a close-up of a computer monitor. So as you notice, it's just a series of red, green, and blue light bulbs and turned to different intensities. So if we were to pan out where you see red, green, and blue lit up, that would actually appear white to us. And when they're turned down, that would appear black to us. This is replicated on all devices, different iPhone devices. Some variation if sometimes they are lined up side by side, sometimes one on top of the other, but it remains its red, green, and blue light bulbs. So we have a name for this. It's called a pixel. It's the smallest unit of any image. And a one pixel has three subpixels, the red, the green, the blue. And it's like they're, they're on a range of 255 is the highest, down to zero is the lowest. So you could think of it as a dimmer switch. Dimmer that goes up to 255, down to zero. And here's just a little diagram. So we, we consider that all three of them together, that is one pixel. And then each piece is, is called a subpixel. So what do you suppose these numbers would represent? So say this first one. So it goes, the order is red, green, blue. So if my red is turned up full blast and the other two are off, what color am I gonna get? Someone could shout it out. Red, red very good. What about our second one? I, I turned green off and the other two on. Magenta. Yeah, it'll be a purple magenta, very good. All off. <laughs> and then what about, uh, they're all the same, they're all at about half. Very good, I, that was, I thought that was gonna be harder, yes. So, so it's about halfway between black and white, you'll get gray. And then this last one, I have my red and my green about halfway, and then no blue. Uh, good, very creative guesses. Actually, it's kind of this brown, yellowish, it's kind of yellowish, but kind of brownish since, it's, since they're turned so low. Perfect, we have mastered colors. We're halfway there. So next up, we'll talk about arrays. An array is just a row of something, a row of numbers, a 2D array, many rows. Think of a spreadsheet. That's all, that's all we need to know. The computer word for array, it just is a table, a grid. Images are just large 2D arrays of pixels. 
Yes, my sample image is from a romance novel of the early 80s. I don't know why, but <laughs> it spoke to me. So, <laughs> we had these in my house when I was little, so I don't know, it spoke to me. So, uh, so if we just zoom in um, quite a bit, then we could start to see, really, this is just a grid of pixels. And we'll zoom in even more. And it becomes more obvious. We're, so we're, going, we're zooming into that top corner even more. And it's just, you can see it's sort of boxy pixels zoomed in even more. And so this is really what's going on. These are just pixels with the red, green, and blue values. This is just an array of numbers, 2D array of numbers. So we can see this top one in the corner. It's almost white. They're all turned up pretty high, but they're not quite white. And so then until it gets more purpley. So we just say that uh, going across our width is the x-axis. That would be like the columns. And then our height, the y-axis, that would be the rows. So we're just talking about a grid x, y of rows. And in each spot, there is a number. OK, so the next slide is going to be the most complicated slide we have. We'll get through it. Little complication is in our arrays, we can really only have one number per spot. If you think of like a, a, a spreadsheet in each cell, there's really just the one number. Or in our case, that, that must be the case. But so we can't really fit the red, the green, and the blue, all three of them. So we had to figure out a way to kind of mush them together into one value. So this is what happens. You do not need to do this. You don't really need to know this. I just wanted you to know the backstory. This is how, how Java figured out to do it. They convert that red, that green, that blue to binary. They concatenate them, put them one next to each other. And then that number, they turn back into an integer. And so that's how they get. So this integer up here, each one of these represents actually those three values. So that's really what's going on. You never really need to see this, but that's just the full story of what's going on. So. We've mastered colors, we've mastered 2D arrays, it's time to code. So when we have Java, with Java, we can access each of those pixels. We could say, oh, what's the one at row seven, column 10? And if we can access them, then we can change them. So step one, if you're doing this in Java, you create yourself what's called a buffered image. A buffered image comes with standard Java. You don't have to download anything, you don't have to buy anything, it comes with Java. A buffered image is what's going to turn your photo into a 2D array. So this is the code for it. We've turned my thing called photo.jpg into a buffered image, which I'm calling image. Now that it's a buffered image, I can get any pixel I want. So I'll get a pixel at, imagine I declared x as some, some column, and I've declared y as some column. I can get the pixel at this x, y, and I'll save it as this pixel num. And this pixel num will be that long number that really is the combination of the red, green, and blue. So that's handy, I can get a pixel. I can also set a pixel. I can also go, oh, go to my image, please go to column x, uh, column x whatever I declared, column y, and put in the number that I want you to put in. All right, so we can, we, we turn our image to a 2D array, and we could get a pixel, and we could set a pixel. It's a little difficult to uh, deal with these long integers here. I have no idea what red, green, and blue that is. I, there's no way I'm going to memorize all of those integers. So we have something handy to help us called a color object. And a color object helps us convert from that long integer into our separate red, green, and blue that we feel good about. Oops, so, pardon me. So you create a color object. So I say, okay, find myself in my image, get some pixel at some x, y, and turn it into a color object, called pixel color in this case. Once I have a pixel, I can get. Now please extract for me, please, what is just the red component of this? So if I say int red equals pixel color dot get red, it will tell me, oh, that's 217. If I say int green equals pixel color dot get green, it will tell me what that is, 100. So how do you suppose we get the blue? Someone. <laughs> get, blue. get blue. Very, very good. Yes. So if you wanted the blue, you say int blue equals pixel color dot get blue. So we can get the separate parts of it with our color object. Color object does something else pretty handy. It can also create a new pixel of our own invention. So if I say 
create me a new pixel, and I would like it to please be turn the red up to 200, turn the green off, and turn the, the, the blue up to 210, it will create that pixel for us. And it'll do that math to turn it into that log integer for us. So, all right, we have a buffered image. We have a color object. We are almost done here. So let's put this all together. I create my buffered image. This is the line one. We've seen this before. I say, get, get the pixel at 0, 0. Oh, by the way, with arrays, we start counting at 0. So column 0, row 0 is the, first, the very first pixel. So get that top corner pixel turn it into a color, and I could set the pixel. So I set the pixel at 0, 0. And so I've got the pixel, and then I set it. I set it to exactly what it was before. OK, so this, is, this, this was anticlimactic. So <laughs> we got a pixel, we set a pixel, but we didn't actually change it. So that's no fun. So let's change it. Here's a little bit better. I get my pixel. That's, I call that the old color. Oh, no. Oh, no, I gave away the answer. <laughs> That was tragic, OK. We'll, we'll, we'll go through anyway. We'll, we'll, we'll proceed as though I didn't. So I got, got my old pixel. And then I said, create myself a new color. And it's going to be based on the old color. But I'm going to take the red, and I'm going to divide it by 2. I'm going to take the green and divide it by 2. I'm going to take the blue and divide it by 2. And now put in its, in its place, now set the pixel to my new one that I created. And so even though I gave away, what, what, what's going to be the effect going to be when I divide each of those by 2? I turn them down. I turn them closer to black. So yeah, I turned it much darker. And so the result of this, if I were to run this code on that image before, well, not much difference. Uh, you see there is a pixel in the top corner there that turned gray. <laughs> so we now know how to change one pixel. So let's get even better. So this is the code to change just one pixel. And so let's just change all the pixels. And that looks like this. So if you haven't seen a for loop before, for loop just says for every single x, for every single column, and while you're at it, for every single row. So for every x, for every y. So that's what those first two lines are talking about. For every x, for every y, do the same thing that we were doing to that one pixel. Turn them all at half. And so then this is what we get. We've turned it darker. This is the code for the entire program. It fits on one slide. You can all do this. The entire program fits on one slide to turn it into, turn all the pixels darker, and even to save it to a different file. So let's do another example. Here's my challenge. Let's invert an image. In other words, like create like the photo negative of it, like when, when it looked like that was that x-ray vision of me. So for every column, for every row, get the pixel there, and create a new pixel. But I want to get the opposite of the red, the opposite of the green, and the opposite of the blue. So let's talk about what might be the opposite of colors. So for, for this example, so what might, what's the opposite of white? Black. black is the opposite of black. What would be the opposite of very light, light gray? 254, 254, 254. Very dark. And what would those numbers be? 111, one, one, exactly. And then what would the opposite of red be? 255, 00. Very good. So, these are the, so this is how we, what we consider the opposite, the exact inverse. So then the math that's going on there, what would we say? Anyone have any ideas of how you would compute? What was the math that we were doing when we did that? 255 minus. Very good. 255 minus whatever, get red. 255 minus, get green. 255 minus, blue. There we go. And if we do this and we run it on our photo, we have got the photo negative of it. So I have a challenge for each of you, is to make a photo grayscale. So I won't even, we're not even going to do it together. You're on your own. Uh, in, your, in, the, in the cheat sheet, I, there is a link to some starter code. So if you go to that link, there will be some starter code, and also it's in an environment called Replit. So if you, if you can run the Java in, in that website. You can run it right there. So it's OK if you don't have anything set up on your computer. So there is some starter code there, but I've left it blank, and it's to make it grayscale. So you can think about how you might want to do that. Um, also, hey, if you do other, other effects, 
go for it. Change it up a bit. Um, tweet out your results. You can use the photo of that, of that, that uh, book or, or any photo you want. Uh, so tweet your results to me at Katie Jurgens, and obviously use the uh, Codeland hashtags. We could, all, we could all get a gallery going and see what you come up with. Uh, so I look forward to it. And uh, you now have a very impressive Java program that to, to put in your, in your GitHub repo. So thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! That's awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> That was pretty damn cool.